In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to read and write to files. So let's write to files first. We are going to extend our user input application to log when we have failed to convert year the user was born. We need this logic in the else section. There are many ways to write a file, but we need to write to a file and append the subsequent writes sequentially. So to do this, we are going to learn a new command, file.append all text. Now let's see this in action. Start with adding the command file.append all text. Notice that we have an error. Visual Studio is helping us identify potential fixes. The error is due to not having the system.io namespace where the file.append all text is located. Allow Visual Studio to fix the problem for you. Now let's write a log of all the errors. The first parameter is the file name. We will call ours log.txt, and the second parameter is the content we want to write. We are going to use datetime.now to record the current time the log is being written. We will log the username and the year born so that we know what the user typed so we can identify why we can convert this value. Next, we'll need to create a new line terminator so that the next content written to the file will be on a new line. Run the program and test the two scenarios. If we can convert the year born, we should not have a log. Then if the user enters an invalid value, we should have the information written to our log file. Now that we have tested both scenarios, let's see the log file. Navigate to our application folder. Notice that we have a log.txt file. Open the file, and now notice that we have the date and time when the log was written and the user's name as well as what they typed through the year born prompt. Not only did you learn how to write to files, but also to log parts of your application for later analysis. Let's learn how to read files. You will start by creating a new command at line application and name it file read write. We are going to need two files for processing and we'll go over the details in a little bit, but for now, just create them and add them to your project. The first file is a simple text file. Right click on your file read write project and then add then new item. In the add new item dialog window, search for text. Select the text file. Next, name your file simpletext.txt. Now select add to add the file. You can type any text. We are going to paste some text to our files so that we can have a few lines to work with later. We will add a link to our GitHub so that you can follow along or add your own text. The second file we will create is a CSV file format. So let's do the same as we did for the text file. When you search for a CSV file, notice there isn't a template. Let's just use the text file and name it with a CSV extension. We'll name ours processme.csv. Next, we are going to paste some comma delimited text and we will link our GitHub for the sample file. There are many file types, so in our scenario, we're going to read a CSV file. A CSV is a simple file format used to store tabular data such as a spreadsheet or a database. Because it's a text file and the data is separated by a comma, we are going to review a CSV file, then write code to read its content. Our CSV file contains data about motor vehicles, year, make, model, and the price. So for an absolute beginner, parsing a CSV file may be complicated, so let's just take a step back and just read a simple text file and then output its content. Then we can use the techniques used to read the CSV file. We will use the file class. The command to read files is file.readAllText. This command accepts a file path, then it will pass a string containing the contents of the file. 
If we just pass the file name without a path, the command will expect the file to be in the same directory as the application. Now that we're reading the file, let's output the contents of the console. Let's copy the files to where Visual Studio will build our command line application. We could do this manually or have Visual Studios on Windows do this for us when we build. Select the simple text.txt, then in the properties window below you can set up and change the property values for the file. We are going to change the copy to output to copy to always. Now if you build your application, it will copy the file every time to where the application is built. So let's test our scenario and see the content of the file. Run your application and as you can see, we are now reading a simple text file. Now that we know how to read files, let's process a CSV file. Let's first make sure that we set the processme.csv file to be copied to the application directory during the build. Next, read the CSV as we did the text file. Let's only output the vehicle info if the price is over 3000. We write out the logic before coding. So first, read the processme.csv file. Second, iterate through the file result. And third, skip the header information and read line by line. Fourth, check the price if greater than 3,000, then output the data. We could use the read all text, but we need to process the file line by line, so let's change the read all text to read all lines. When we change the command, we get an error. It's because we return multiple lines and an array of strings. So let's change our variable so that it's an array of strings. Now our file content holds multiple lines. To help you visualize this, we are going to run the application in debug mode and look at the contents of our array. As you can see, we have all the lines including the header and each line is in a bucket in our array. Each array has an index value. Now let's look at if we read the contents of the CSV as a string versus array of strings. We need to name our variable unique as you can't have the same variable name declared more than once. As you can see, the read all text just has a string. We could take the string and separate our lines into an array of strings, but it's actually easier if we just use the read all lines command. Now we're going to learn how to work with a collection of values and iterate through them. We are going to use for statement. The for statement executes a statement or block of statements while a specified Boolean expression evaluates to true. To understand this, let's explore the structure of for statement. There are three parts to the for statement. Initializer, condition, iterator. The initializer is executed once. We are going to create a new int variable to keep track of our iteration. The condition is executed every time to evaluate if we should continue inside the body of the for. And the iterator is also executed every time to increment our int variable to let us know what iteration we are on. Now let's add the logic for skipping the header value. The header is the first in the array, so its index value is zero. So if our int iterator is zero, then we should skip the body and continue incrementing the iterator, then check the condition of the loop. When you're inside a body of the for statement, you can break out of it or skip to the next iteration so to skip the line, we'll need to use the continue keyword. We are going to check if the int iterator is zero, then skip the loop and continue.
Let's get the line we are working with by supplying the index iterator. This will pass a string, but it's separated by commas, so we'll need to split by the commas so that we can work only the values we are interested, like the price. We are going to use the split command as it can apply to any string and give it the separator of a comma. Notice that we get back as before an array of strings. Looking at the structure of the line that we just split, you can see that all the fields are separated into their own index. The price is in the index 3. Arrays are zero based, meaning they start from zero. If you want the price, we'll have to use the index 3, but since it's a string, we'll have to convert it. You've seen this command before, so let's do it the same way. If you notice the string being passed is a decimal based, it is very easy to convert that by replacing the int to decimal. Now we can add the logic to check if the price is greater than 3000, then output the results. So let's run our application and notice that we have Chevy and Jeep having price greater than 3000. Now you have the skills to read and write to the files and be able to process the content of the files. So at this time, you've acquired enough skills to be able to write your own application without a tutorial. So in the next video, we will go over the logic of an application and let you build it. And good luck. We look forward to hearing from you.